Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today, we've got an episode of Spare Change. The topics on these episodes can vary pretty widely, so stay tuned to see what's in store for this one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. And while you're at it, subscribe and review our podcast as well. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Chorus studio. Welcome to the show. So on today's episode, the topic or I guess kind of debate that I'm going to be addressing is uh, one that's kind of gone back and forth in Magic Community for a, a while now and keeps cropping back up, but it's kind of come back up now as of recent. Uh, and it's the, you know, debate of should wizards control commander? Or I guess should wizards be in charge of commander? So for those for those of you that don't know, Wizards actually isn't in control of the Commander format. Um, you know the rules, the bannings, those kinds of things. The Rules Committee is. It's completely separate from Wizards. Uh, and you know there has been a debate, basically. You know, oh, should Wizards take charge of this format, like it's in charge of, you know, almost all other kind of major formats, or should the Rules Committee kind of stay in charge of the format? Uh, and basically, you know, I kind of have talked about, you know, I guess indirectly, on some previous episodes, potentially, like you know what my opinion is on this. I know. Eddie and I had a discussion on a couple episodes on the potential rules changes in Commander that Mark Rosewater brought up. Uh, and we actually, the reason this episode is happening now is because of one of those that was, again, kind of brought up uh, and started being debated again on Twitter. So actually, let's just jump to that really quick. So um, basically, there was kind of this post on, you know, hybrid mana and the kind of, you know, uh, the differences between, you know, the way that Commander's rules apply to it uh, and that the way that kind of magic... Uh, the magic designers kind of intend for hybrid to work. Uh, so Sheldon Menery uh, responded basically uh, to a post about hybrid mana is that the reason that the reason it's not the same isn't really that hybrid works differently. It's that those formats don't have col color identity rules. So basically a card, you know, a hybrid mana card, let's just pull up one on the screen, like Kahira, the Orphan Guard, uh, you know, has a, a color identity of one Slesnia Slesnia, you know, so in other formats, you know, if you've got a mono white deck or a mono green deck, you can play Kahira because, you know, you can cast Kahira, you know, with either white or green. But in Commander, since we've got color identity rules, you know, based on your commander's color identity, uh, it still needs to kind of abide by those rules. So Kahira itself is Selesnia. It's not, you know, mono white or mono green. It, it is both, not either. It's not, it's an and, it's not an or. Uh, and the kind of, you know, response from... Uh, from, I, I guess not, I shouldn't say from Wizards, because I'm not sure if everyone at Wizards agrees with this, but Mark Rosewater, uh, I believe head designer at Wizards, uh, responded with that. Well, here's the problem. Commander's take on hybrid contradicts the design function of it. Hybrid is specifically designed to be used in monocolor decks. Companion, as an example, was designed to be used in monocolor decks. I get it's also multicolored, but that's a byproduct. So this is kind of like the, the debate that's kind of happening right now between, you know, uh, the commander format kind of rules makers and then also kind of like the designers of the game that, they, that there's kind of like a different kind of view when it comes to how hybrid should work and basically you know I guess uh, the thought could be you know if wizards was in charge that this would change because of that so basically kind of like the um, the companion example is you know like basically you know with uh, Kahira you know now you can use Kahira if you know if this rule was changed for hybrid you could use Kahira in you know a a mono green deck you know so if you've got you know let's say a a beast deck or whatnot that is mono green Kahira can be your companion for that or whatnot or if you just got a mono green deck in general you could just use uh, Kahira in the deck or a mono white deck uh you know if you've got a mono white cats deck you can use Kahira for that too so yeah, essentially, you know, that's kind of like the the potential debate that's going on right now. I mean, a popular, you know, uh, hybrid card that always comes up, you know, in debates essentially is like, you know, a Kitchen Finks, you know, Kitchen Finks, you know, isn't a broken card or whatnot. Well, actually, it is in some combos or whatnot. But, you know, like if I have a mono white deck, can I just use it in my mono white deck? And the commander rules don't really allow for that. Uh, but, you know, the, the designers of the game might say, well, that is intended to be used in both, you know, a, a, or in either a green or a white deck. It is a green or a white card versus the kind of and that commander rules currently apply. Uh, the kind of example, uh, as of recent, that kind of shows, or shows, is kind of talking about, you know, the, you know, the functionality uh, of the commander rules versus kind of like the design mentality. Uh, is kind of like that death trigger rules change that actually just happened. 
Uh, Alenda the Dusk Rose, you know, has a death trigger. Whenever um, she dies, you create X-1-1 white vampire creature tokens with a lifelink where X is Alenda's power. Now, previously, commander death triggers didn't exactly work because it was a replacement. I'm not a judge, so I'm probably going to say some things completely wrong, but basically at a base level, uh, when Alenda dies, you if it's your commander, you have to choose to basically, instead of putting her in your graveyard, putting her in your graveyard, you put her to your command zone. And because of that, you don't get a death trigger, which, you know, kind of really makes Alenda not really work as a commander very well, unless you've got a bunch of reanimation effects. And there's got a lot of workarounds that have to happen um recently the rules committee did make a rules change on this uh to kind of make it so that now commander death triggers do work uh, again i don't know exactly the rules of that but basically yes now your commander can still go back to the command zone but you still get that death trigger from it and this was something that the i believe mark rosewater kind of brought up about death triggers when uh with those potential rule changes is that basically wanting to make uh wanting the rule to change to make it work so that you know that the designers weren't i guess limited kind of on what they could make because I, I believe that he also mentioned that you know there were some creatures or whatnot they were planning on designing to be legendary that had death triggers but they didn't intend they didn't actually put them out as legendary because you know it, that death trigger really doesn't work from the command zone or from a commander uh, but now they do so that kind of opens up some design space for them so basically kind of the thought is you know if wizards is in charge you know basically kind of so that the rules kind of work for the designers so they're designing things you know like hybrid you know if they're designing it for an ore card you know, a, a white or a, a green card. It can work for a white or a green deck in Commander. So that's kind of the mentality. Now, actually, I probably should have answered this question earlier, but, you know, the one that I posed at the beginning of the episode, you know, should Wizards be in charge or in control of Commander? In my opinion, they should not be. Um, and I'll explain why, you know, my reasoning for that and, and whatnot. And that doesn't mean that I completely agree with every single thing that the Rules Committee does or all the decisions that they make, cards that they ban or unban or, or whatnot. Uh, it just means that I believe that the Rules Committee is doing a, a great job, the best job they can do. You know, they're trying to take a lot of different things into account in the decisions that they make. You know, they're trying to do what's best for the format. They're trying to make sure the format continues to grow and that many people still continue to enjoy the format. Um, so I'll just talk about kind of like, you know, potentially reasons why Wizards wouldn't be, it would not be good to kind of switch control of the format over to Wizards. In my opinion, again, this is all kind of speculation, not necessarily things that would happen but just things that kind of I think through when I think of what would actually happen if Wizards took control of Commander. So the main kind of point that I want to bring up for why the Rules Committee is better suited, in my opinion, to control the Commander format than Wizards is, is basically kind of making rules for or bans for like the best of the community versus potentially making rules for what's best for wizards and kind of like i'll try to break this down to a couple different things but let's just start off by talking about some of the commanders that are banned in commander uh so braids cabal minion emrakul the aeon's torn orio silver tommy ascendant grizzlebrand iona shield of emeria leovold emissary of trust lutri the spell chaser and rafael slanmer emissary I believe are the eight commanders that are currently banned uh, in commander. Obviously there are, I think 40 or so other cards that are also banned. So out of the entire kind of pool of, you know, a ton of magic cards out there, commander has a very small ban list uh, compared to other formats and whatnot. It's a very small ban list. Not many cards are actually banned. Um, ones that, you know, I'm, and that doesn't mean that I actually agree with kind of every single ban or unbanned decision. One recently that I definitely in my opinion, still disagree with is Iona Shield of Mary being banned, but that's a topic for a different day. But anyways, just because, you know, a card is banned or unbanned doesn't mean that I necessarily agree with it. But I think that the rules committee is very good at kind of laying out their reasons why. I do think that they, you know, they do take the time to do their deal, deal, due diligence to kind of really understand, you know, what's going to be best for the community or whatnot uh, in kind of making these decisions. Another thing that I actually don't agree with is, you know, like living wish, like the, the wish cycle doesn't actually work in commander because, you know, you don't have a sideboard or whatnot. You can't get cards from outside the game. So that's something I also don't agree with. And just because I don't agree with these things doesn't mean I think that the rules committee is doing a bad job. It just means that, you know, I happen to disagree with them on these particular topics. I know there are plenty of people who disagree, you know, with the rules committee potentially on, you know, the hybrid issue or whatnot. But I know there's also a lot of people, if not maybe more, that are on their side about the hybrid issue too. So I might not agree with, you know, everything that the rules committee does or all the decisions that they make. But I do believe, again, that they have the best intentions when it comes to making these decisions. I don't think that they're making them for their own personal gain. I don't think, you know, that basically, you know, like, oh, I just don't like playing against this card, so let's ban it. I personally just don't like this. Everyone else is fine with it, but I personally don't like it, so I'm going to ban it. I don't believe they're making decisions like that. Now, let's kind of talk about the other side of things right now. You know, uh, commanders that have been banned as of recently, there have been some, you know, recently printed commanders that have been banned. Uh, Lutri the Spell Chaser is kind of a recent one. Actually, I believe if Wizards was in control of the format, they probably would still ban that one as, uh, ban that one as well. Uh, because they did kind of bring that one up to the rules committee. But basically, the power level of commander or the kind of power level of cards kind of coming out 
seem to be recently a bit overpowered. I mean, some examples of some recent commanders that have been printed in the past year or so. Uh, Urza Lord High Artificer, uh, or year or two, I guess. Urza Lord High Artificer is an extremely broken and powerful commander. I mean, it comes into play, makes you a 0-0 zero, zero colorless construct, um, which gets bigger for each artifact you control. You can tap an untapped artifact you control to add blue, and you can pay to shuffle your library and exile the top card. Until the end of the turn, you can play that card without paying its mana cost. This one just basically turns all of your artifacts into mana rocks. So, yeah, that is extremely powerful, and it gives you kind of a means to use that mana. Uh, Two Lane Teller of Tales says, whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card, then you can put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield, and you can make three and tap it to return to our creature you control to its owner's hand. This one just says, hey, do you like drawing cards and ramping to the most powerful things in Commander? Yeah, great. Uh, Kinnon Bonder Pond Prodigy is a even newer one from Ikoria. It says, whenever you tap a non-land permanent for mana, add one mana of any type that mana produced and pay five green blue. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may put a non-human creature card from among them onto the battlefield, but the rest of them bottom of your library in a random order. Yeah, this one is pretty absurd. I mean, it kind of like it doubles up mana from a lot of sources, uh, not, not not lands, but everything else essentially, uh, and then gives you kind of a place to put that mana. There are a couple of you know cards that actually kind of like you know combo with this one as well. So kind of like the the power level of commanders as of recently that have been printed by Wizards has gone up, I I believe, and I think that Wizards is going to keep pushing those boundaries. Um, basically, um, what I would kind of worry about is would they keep pushing the boundaries even further kind of if they were in charge would they start kind of changing some rules up potentially i mean one kind of rule that they already kind of have changed that kind of i have brought up before and i know that there's both sides of this debate uh but basically you know like planeswalkers as commanders um those are not l allowed you know the rules committee you know has this stance you know basically that planeswalkers you cannot use as your commander yes they are legendary uh that was added a little while back but yes planeswalkers are not legendary but it's only legendary creatures that you can use as your commanders but uh, wizards kind of went around that and basically you know printed started printing a, a little while back you know uh, can be your commander on certain planeswalkers so now they can be i believe there's 11 planeswalkers that kind of follow that and so basically kind of that you know if wizards was actually in charge of the format would they just up change rules instead of trying to use these workarounds so so things that i worry about might not necessarily obviously this might be a bit you know uh, on like the the far side of actually things actually happening you know potentially you know very unlikely to actually happen but could uh, like a, a card that was actually kind of like a, a promo card. Um, again, I think I did an episode on like the most exclusive commanders of all time in this one and the next one we we'll talk about are on this. But Soul Advocate Eternal, uh, it has, uh, it's a 4-4 a four, four Dragon Angel that costs green, white, blue, black. It has Legendary Partner, so you can have two commanders if this is one of them. The other one is promoted to Legendary. It's got Flying Vigilance and Teamwork whenever you attack or block with both Soul Advocate Eternal and its partner support for it and investigate four times. So... This one kind of pushes and kind of breaks like a commander rule. I mean, basically, you know, there are partner commanders, yes, but this one's just like, hey, you can have any other creature as your partner commander. So, yeah, this one, it, it gets promoted to legendary, and it is now, you know, uh, a commander as well. So you can just choose any creature in Magic history and say, hey, now this is my commander as well, even if it doesn't fit commander rules or whatnot. So that kind of is like a, you know, like, would wizards kind of take this a step further? Would they take it, you know, so, okay, you can get these kind of creatures as your commander as well. They, they would kind of, you know, maybe change the rules in that way that kind of might potentially break the format in, in, in a way that kind of makes it either less appealing or less fun to many players. It could make it better, but it also could definitely make it worse if they push things a bit too far. The next one that I want to bring up is actually kind of pushing things in a different way. Again, I said earlier that, you know, Planeswalkers originally couldn't be commanders. Now they've got can be your commander on some of them. And this one is actually a saga that says can be your commander on it. It's the Legend of Arena. It costs one blue, red, white. Uh, it's lower counters one and two. Are create a two, create a two, one red human wizard creature token spells you cast. This turn costs one to cast for each wizard you control. And its third is search your library for a planeswalker card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuff your library. It enters with initial loyalty counter on it for each wizard you control. So yeah, basically kind of making it so that, okay, now you don't even need, you know, it doesn't have to be a creature. It doesn't have to be one of these very specific planeswalkers. It can be, you know, maybe they'll make, you know, artifacts. Maybe they'll make enchantments. Maybe they'll make, you know, lands that could be, you know, your your commander. Not saying that they would, but I'm saying that obviously, you know, that could be a design space that they explore uh, to kind of, you know, push the format further and further and further. And I think that the kind of danger with that is basically that I've seen kind of elsewhere. Obviously, I don't I don't play any of these other formats uh, for the most part. But basically, you know, like in standard, I've been hearing you know that standard has been you know uh, there was a point in time where standard had like no bands like since Jace the Mind Sculptor. You know, there was a ton of bands. Uh, there there weren't any bands kind of in between then in a certain period of time in in recent ish years where a ton of bands have been happening. So like Oko Thief of Crowns, they you know they printed and it broke a ton of formats, including standard. So a lot of other cards being banned in standard as well. They printed Loris the Dream Den. 
which you know got banned in even I believe like Legacy. Um, you know, which it, not no cards really get banned in a format like that. Uh, I believe again, I'm not a Legacy player, but basically. They've been pushing power levels a lot recently. And because of that, you know, they're getting a bit ban happy, some might say, where they just say, okay, that's a problem, let's just ban it. So that's kind of like my thought process on them potentially pushing things a bit too far if they're in charge and can change some of the commander rules around to do kind of what they want to do potentially, that they might change rules and that it might kind of ruin the format potentially. Now, kind of one thing that, that I brought up before, I believe on that, you know, uh, potential rules changes episodes is that Mark Rosewater has basically said that he actually doesn't really play commander. Like there's been a couple of times where he's played like maybe on camera for like uh, for another channel or whatnot, but like he really doesn't just actually play. That's not one of the formats that he really enjoys playing kind of actively. And, you know, I, I think, and obviously there are players at, you know, at, at, there's plenty of people at Wizards that do play commander, but when you have people in charge that, you know, aren't kind of in the day to day of making uh, or of actually playing kind of the, the format, and then you're having people potentially make decisions to change that format for, you know, maybe design reasons versus actually kind of playability or functionality reasons, I think that could be a bit dangerous. And again, I think that allows, you know, for, oh, we'll just, we'll, we'll push things, we, you know, we'll change these rules and see if it, it works out. And then if not, we'll ban. And then I think that could be a dangerous, a, a slippery slope to kind of, you know, go down basically is that, you know, maybe some players then enjoy that, you know, a small chunk of players enjoy that kind of new way to play commander or whatnot. And other players don't, and then it gets banned and changed. And some players are going out and playing this way and some players playing that way versus kind of a consistent approach. And I think that could be basically a, a problem. I think the other problem, and again, I don't want, I'm not trying to accuse, uh, you know, a, a wizards of doing this or, or, or potentially doing this if this were to happen, but wizards is a company and they do have shareholders or they, you know, owned by Hasbro, they do have shareholders. So they need to make money. That's just a kind of a fact about companies, obviously, but basically, you know, potentially some decisions could be made potentially for monetary gain then. And that kind of, not that they would, but you know, you could kind of see like, you know, you could be questioning decisions on what happens based on you know, something, uh, you know, them making a profit on it versus it actually being the right move for the format. So potentially, you know, a card that many people have called for being banned for a while is Cyclonic Rift. Uh, I do not believe it should be banned, but that is another topic for another day. But it's an instant that costs one in a blue. It says return target non-land permanent. You can don't control to its owner's hand. It's got overload for six in a blue. So basically it's a one-sided board wipe at instant speed for seven mana. You never really cast it for, for two mana, but, uh, but basically, yeah, it's an extremely powerful board wipe in Commander and it sees a ton of play. Now, there is a kind of, a, a, again, a good percentage of people that, you know, would like this, see this banned in Commander. The Rules Committee has not banned it. Uh, but, you know, potentially if Wizards, you know, became in charge of the Commander format, one thing that I could see potentially happening, again, not that it would, is that they could ban a card like this, Cyclonic Rift. And then as suddenly, you know, in the next set, they print something that's not quite as powerful as Cyclonic Rift, so it's not ban worthy. But now this is kind of the new chase card to get that essentially kind of replaces Cyclonic Rift. So like, I mean, River's Rebuke is is a much worse Cyclonic Rift. You know, it says return all non line permanents, target player controls to owner's hand. So it only hits one person and it's at sorcery speed. So it's much worse, but maybe, you know, you do a sorcery speed version that costs six instead. Uh, or sorry, a sorcery version that, you know, hits all players except for you. That might be playable or one that, you know, hits all players still, but it costs 10 mana instant speed. You know, they could change and essentially make a worse version of Cyclonic Rift after banning Cyclonic Rift to try to drive sales for that next set or product or whatnot, just because of, uh, you know, like they're, they're, they're kind of saying like, you know, like, hey, we're trying to appease the commander players. You know, we're trying to, you know, get rid of this card that's problematic in the format, but then kind of giving a solution that kind of benefits them monetarily. I could see that potentially happening. I'm not saying it would again, but you know, it all comes down to money at the end, you know. I think that with the rules committee, you know, they do a great job again. Um, in my opinion, you know, they have the best intentions. It, it, the, th the decisions that they're making aren't based off of monetary, you know, gain. The decision that Wizards, I'm not saying they would, but they might make decisions based off of monetary gain. Or at the very least, kind of any decisions that they did make, if they were in charge of the format, would be questioned as if it was, you know, are they doing this to make money? And I think that kind of lessens the trust in those decisions. And then I think that, you know, the commander format, again, if they start pushing things, if they, I just think that it could cause a lot of problems overall, if wizards were in charge 
And yeah, overall, I do think that the rules committee is doing a great job. You know, again, I don't agree with every single decision that they make, but I do think that they have the best intentions for the commander format, you know, keeping it healthy, making sure it's going to last a long time and that people continue to enjoy it. So yeah, I'd love to hear from you though. So let me know in the comments below, you know, where you sit on this debate, you know, do you think that the rules committee should stay in charge of commander? Or do you think that the wizards would do a better job in charge of commander? Or do you think that they just should be in charge for, for whatever reason? Yeah, just let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks again and have a good one. And make sure you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons who help make this show possible. I truly couldn't do any of this without your support. If you want to support this channel directly, consider becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tacks. There are even tiers where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. You can check out all the Patreon tiers and rewards at patreon.com slash commanders quarters. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again and have a good one. <laughs>